Qin Tian and Nick spend the rest of the night snuggled up together to share body warmth as the cold snow continues to pile out of their hole. Their cuddling soon even wakes up Qin Tian's libido making it awkward for them. When the sun rose the next morning, it was still pretty cold but they disentangled from each other. Qin Tian congratulates himself for holding back even though he was hugging the cute and naked Nick the whole night, but he hopes that he won't get seduced again in the future. They then put on their clothes which were sopping wet last night, thankfully the water in them had turned into ice so they were able to just shake it off and wear it again dry. They then move their body around to accelerate their blood circulation and generate heat for their body. The ordeal they went through left them pretty hungry, and Qin Tian can even hear Nick's stomach growling so he brings out their last chicken. He lays it on its back and cuts open its stomach. Unfortunately, they cannot make any fire in the cold, so they had to eat the chicken raw. The parasites in the meat should have been frozen to death so it should be pretty safe for them to eat it. Nick notices that Qin Tian is removing the chicken's organs, so he explains that they won't eat that part. These parts are much more infested with parasites so they will just eat it as a last resort. In the meantime, he is hoping to use the organs instead as bait for wild animals. Nick's mood brightens at the thought of hunting these animals. The bare snowfield might look like a barren wasteland, but in reality, numerous animals live there. This includes seals, snowbirds, arctic foxes, and the most powerful predator, the polar bear. Of these animals, Qin Tian is the most interested in bears. Polar bears have a sharp sense of smell which is seven times better than a dog, and this allows them to find food in the snow. Hence, Qin Tian is hoping that a polar bear will be attracted to the chicken organs and find them. Other animals like snow foxes are omnivores and very timid, making them unlikely to be found. Although Qin Tian is hoping to encounter a polar bear, he is still apprehensive about it since they are one of the strongest animals on land, and he isn't entirely sure he can defeat it when the time comes. Meanwhile, Qin Tian cuts up the dressed chicken and hands Nick a piece of chicken leg. He then forces himself to take a bite out of it, although he almost vomits in disgust. Nick encourages him to eat more so they can survive together, and Qin Tian bites into the raw meat once more. Nick even stuffs his mouth full of snow so he won't vomit it back out and forces him to swallow it. Outside the barren snowfield, the cold wind continues to blow across the land bringing forth new snow and lower temperatures. Inside their warm hole, Qin Tian and Nick grunt in exertion as they exercise and perform their workout routine to increase their body's temperature. A few minutes later, Qin Tian finally feels hot enough and ventures out of their hole to check their surroundings. Outside, the weather had calmed down a bit so they decided to continue their journey. The chicken's organs they saved were now frozen in ice so Qin Tian pockets it in the hope that it might be useful in the future. The two start on their trek across the frozen ground, only leaving footprints behind on the snow. A few hours later, Nick remarks that they seem to be walking in the same spot, but Qin Tian explains to her that this is actually because they can only see snow all around them. Thus, it creates an illusion of walking in circles and making people give up halfway. However, they must continue on to survive. A few more hours later, Qin Tian rubs his eyes since something seems wrong with them. Nick concernedly asks him if he's okay but when Qin Tian looks at her, his vision seems to be blurry. They decide to take a rest for a moment while Qin Tian wonders if he has already expended too much energy, and there's an insufficient blood supply in his brain. However, his eyesight continues to worsen, and slowly but surely, he can't even see Nick but just a white wall of light. Thankfully, he can still hear her freaking out about his condition. Nick volunteers to carry him if he cannot see anymore, but Qin Tian decides that they first need to calm down. There must be a reason for his eyesight, and he checks the wild first aid collections book he bought. Maybe there is some relevant information in it. After a few minutes of reading, he found the reason for his supposed blindness. It was a phenomenon called snow blindness. This is caused by the UV rays from the sun, bouncing off the reflective white surface of the snowy ground and into one's eyes. The UV rays damage the cornea causing one to have blurry vision or temporary blindness. It is advised that the patient go to a dark place or cover the eyes with an ice towel. If one avoids using the eyes, then vision should recover after several days of rest. It is also recommended to use fresh milk as eye drops to relieve the pain. In an emergency, one can also use acupuncture to relieve the symptoms. Most importantly, repeated snow blindness will gradually weaken the vision and can cause chronic eye problems or even permanent blindness. Despite this grave warning, Qin Tian breathes a sigh of relief since it's still just a temporary illness for now. He cuts off a piece of cloth from the edges of his pants and gives it to Nick. He instructs her to cover her eyes with it so what happened to him won't happen to her. The cloth is made from cotton and linen so it has relatively large gaps between them, allowing her to see slightly through it and still guide them through the snow. 
this would be the best way for Nick to protect her eyes from the UV rays without making her completely blind. After Nick secures the blindfold over her eyes, Chin Tian grabs hold of her and lets her guide him where to go. Nick still suggests that she can just carry the blinded Chin Tian, but Chin Tian advises her this will be a bad strategy. Carrying him would take a lot of energy out of her and they can only resist the cold by moving their body. If Chin Tian allows himself to be carried, he'll be frozen to death within 10 minutes. Thus, the two continue on their journey through the frozen wasteland with the cold winds buffeting them from all sides. Although he can't see, Chin Tian knows he won't get hurt if he falls down because the snow is soft all around them. However, if wild animals attack them, then it would be hard for the two of them to drive them away. Chin Tian decides to buy the gift Silver Wolf from the shop, which will help his eyes recover in the shortest amount of time. Thankfully, when Chin Tian turns on the system, it appears directly in his head so he can still read the menu even if he's blinded. He then selects the gift Silver Wolf and it spreads throughout his body. The store description of the gift, however, dictates that the gift would only improve the user's resilience several times. Therefore, it won't immediately heal Chin Tian's eyes. Thus, he grabs Nick once more and continues their journey. Although he can't recover immediately, he hopes that the gift will accelerate his recovery and improve their survival odds in the snowfield multiple times. A few hours later, their surroundings darken as the sun is about to set. This also lowers the temperature all around them by a lot, so Chin Tian advises Nick for them to stop for the day. They should instead find a place to sleep. They once again dig a hole in the snow and create a makeshift shelter. This time, they were able to dig a large enough snow cave before the sun fully set. The two hug each other, and Chin Tian promises Nick that they will definitely get out of their dangerous situation. Thus, they spend the next few days on a routine. They walk throughout the day until the sun sets. Then they create a snow cave for them to rest in the evenings. They also periodically exercise to keep their body temperature up and their muscles moving. At night, they share body warmth by hugging each other as they sleep. After a few days, Chin Tian starts to wonder when they can escape this hellish snowfield. Even with his gift, his body almost can't hold on. His ears got frostbitten the first day they came here. Then they stiffened, got red, swollen, and blistered. Finally, they broke, festered, scabbed, and blackened. If it weren't for the fact that bacteria can't live in such a cold environment, his ears would probably already have completely gotten rotten. Thankfully, his eyes have almost fully recovered, but now, his nose is also broken. Even though he's wearing shoes and socks, his feet are also now swollen. He can't even curl the soles off his feet, and even just slightly moving them always brings a sharp pain radiating up his leg. His exposed skin has been red, chapped, and turned into pieces of scale-like dead skin. This dead skin is now starting to fall off when touched. Even the clothes-covered part of his body is now also starting to swell up. Of course, these are just the surface problems that they can see. The most dangerous problem is that the low temperature has damaged the physiological functions of their bodies. He can obviously feel that his body is getting weaker, and his power is fading. His stomach also couldn't adapt to eating raw meat so it would twitch now and then these days. As for Nick, although she has lived on the island for several years and has been influenced by the special magnetic field there, which makes her stronger than ordinary people, she is still severely frostbitten. What's more? The muscles of her arms were sprained, and with the journey they are undertaking her injury has gotten worse. Now her whole shoulders and arm are stiff. Even minor movements cause severe pain to her. Later that night, they hear a strange noise outside, and the two look at each other in worry. They were sure it was attracted by the chicken's organs, but they weren't sure if it was a snow fox or wolf. No matter what it is, they have to catch it and not let it eat the organs. All of a sudden, a great big paw blasts through their makeshift door. It was a polar bear one of the biggest predators on land. They can reach 8.3 feet in length with large front paws suitable for swimming and walking on thin ice. The two quickly draw out their knives and rushes the polar bear. They have to quickly take action to bring it down. Nick stabs her two daggers right at the polar bear's stomach while Chin Tian dashes behind it. Chin Tian then jumps on the polar bear and stabs it, but the bear blocks with its huge paws. Chin Tian notes that he's too weak now and he couldn't even stab the knife deeply in the bear's arms. The bear then shakes the two of them off and lifts a huge paw to strike them down. It smashes the paw directly at Nick, but thankfully she manages to jump away at the last instant. Chin Tian jumps on the bear once more in the hopes of distracting the bear. He stabs his knife at the bear's back but its fat is too thick, and he cannot deal fatal damage. Chun Tian jumps out of the bear's reach once again as the bear stares menacingly at him. Thankfully the fight was now starting to warm up Chin Tian's cold body, and the pain in his eyes was relieved a lot. Before the polar bear can make a move, Xin Tian throws a snowball in its eye, momentarily obscuring its vision. 
They then took this chance to run away. Qin Tian realizes that if it weren't for his gift, he would have been defeated at the beginning of the fight. If this situation continues, then he will get tired much faster than the beer. Thus, he can't just run away. He has to stand his ground and fight back before he completely gets exhausted. Han Tian stops running and stands his ground against the incoming polar bear. Qin Tian plans to use his gift, Flash Cat, so that he can still be more agile than the bear. His knife grazes past the bear's face, blinding it in one eye. He then quickly sneaks behind it and starts attacking it in every which way with his knife. The bear growls in pain from the many wounds he's receiving and he tries to swat Qin Tian away. Qin Tian jumps back, dodging the bear's massive claws. He realizes that if he continues this strategy, then he might be able to finally defeat the bear. However, the bear suddenly roars at the top of its lungs and immediately runs away from the humans. This surprises Qin Tian who immediately gives chase to the fleeing bear. As long as he kills the bear, then they would be able to get a lot of food, and its fur can also be used as a quilt to resist the harsh cold climate. Therefore, he can't let the bear escape. He charges at the bear and slams his knife directly at the bear's side. The bear endures the attack and continues running away. Meanwhile, Nick tries to catch up to the two. All of a sudden, the bear reverses direction and slams into Qin Tian, blasting him back. Qin Tian crashes into the snow, realizing that the bear must have tricked him. It was just pretending to run away so it could turn around and attack him in surprise. The massive bear then stands on its two hind legs in front of Qin Tian preparing to kill him. Qin Tian's aching body still hasn't recovered as the bear lifts its huge paw to crush Qin Tian. Thankfully, Nick finally catches up and throws her knife at the bear, plunging it deep into the bear's eye socket. While the bear is distracted, Qin Tian uses his remaining points to purchase one last gift from the shop, and he can feel the strength of a rampaging bull coursing through his body. Qin Tian stands and uppercuts the bear with his full strength, hitting it directly in its throat, which explodes in a shower of blood. With that, the bear slowly loses its strength and topples on top of Qin Tian, crushing him under its heavy weight. Nick grabs hold of Qin Tian's hand and tries to pull him away from the bear. Thankfully, the land was packed with snow, so the one-ton polar bear didn't crush him. After getting out from under the bear, Nick hurriedly cuts open the bear's stomach. The two then remove their clothing and crawl inside the bear's inside. There, they were able to stave off the cold since the bear's thick fur and meat acted as an insulator. Not only that, the bear's body temperature is still high but slowly dropping. Which means they can't stay there for too long. Qin Tian asks Nick how she's feeling, and Nick assures him that she's recovering pretty well. After recovering from their fight, the two put on their clothes and crawl back out of the bear's stomach. Qin Tian announces that they'll first dig a snow cave, and later, he has a special gift to Nick. A few hours later, Nick is elated at the gift Qin Tian gave her. Her eyes twinkle as she puts on her new gloves and clothes. Qin Tian had successfully managed to skin the polar bear and used its skin to create clothes for both of them. Now, they both feel warmer. Aside from the clothes, Qin Tian had also created a large quilt big enough to wrap both of them. They snuggle under the quilt, and for the first time in a long while, they manage to get a good night's sleep. Tan Tian acknowledges that Nick's conditions had all been his fault. Nick's arms had gotten hurt to save him, and she had been pushing herself outside in the snowfield to guide him when he was blinded. He knows that her body must be almost reaching her limit, and is about to give out. The next day, the two woke up late in the day and fully rested, ready to continue their journey. Nick proclaims that she feels much better now, and her frostbite is also getting better. They survey the skinned carcass of the bear before them and decide to first take care of it. Qin Tian asks Nick to open her mouth and puts one of the bear's eyeballs in her mouth. Nick finds it disgusting, but Qin Tian orders her to chew it well. He tells her that it contains many nutrients, such as fatty acids, vitamins, collagen, and other healthy ingredients that their body sorely needs. He throws the other eyeball in his mouth and chews it too despite the ugly taste. Afterward, Nick wonders if they should take all the bear's meat with them. Qin Tian wants to take all of it, but he acknowledges that this might be a bad idea. Traveling through the cold weather with a ton of weight might be unwise and dangerous. Thus, he suggests that they only take the best and most useful part of the bear's meat. Since Nick is still severely injured, he instructs her to rest while he handles the butchering of the meat. That way, she'll be strong enough to continue their journey after he finishes. This takes the whole day, and when night falls, they go back to sleep under their quilt. One day of rest was not enough to relieve their long-term tiredness. If it weren't for his gift Silver Wolf, which improved his resilience, Qin Tian believes he would probably be asleep too like Nick. However, he has to stay awake and keep watch. Instead of sleeping, he opens his character screen and assesses his progress. To fight the polar bear, he purchased the gift Tough Ox with 11,000 points. Thanks to it, he got the strength to pierce the polar bear's throat even though he was exhausted. 
He worries that his points are draining rapidly, but he checks the mystery gift items in the shop. Inside, different experience packs were presented before him, including a snowfield experience pack, a snow mountain experience pack, and a snow forest experience pack. His eyes widen upon seeing these gifts, and not only that, he is surprised to learn that it only costs 1,000 points to buy one. With it, he would probably save a lot of time. However, he soon realizes that unlike before where knowledge he buys from the store is in one set, this snow experience pack seems to have been divided into three purchases, so in reality, it wasn't actually cheap but expensive. He doesn't have a choice however, and he is forced to buy the three experience packs because the knowledge they contain can save his life. Chun Tian purchases the three packs and the knowledge instantly gets transferred into his brain. Ideas and techniques immediately spring into Chin Tian's mind on how to improve their situation. For example, their current habitat of a snow cave can still be improved. If he changes the ceiling into an arch-like form, the cave would be more stable. He should also set more than one entrance into the cave so that in case wild animals like polar bears come charging into their residence, they wouldn't be trapped inside. Not only that, their cave is in reality also a bad location. The snow he used was formed from falling snow, which is way weaker than snow piled by wind which is heavy and dense. If only he didn't need to save some points for emergencies, Chin Tian would have bought all the experience packs in the store. The knowledge they contain truly is priceless, and one cannot learn simply by reading. With the new expertise he gained from the store, Chin Tian feels more confident that they can survive their current ordeal. According to the experience pack, it would be best not to use an igloo or an ice cave for more than seven days because it might collapse. That means they can still rest there for a while and leave after a week. How few days later, the two continue on their journey with Chin Tian bearing a large backpack, full of the supplies he gathered from the bear's corpse. After a few hours of walking, he notices that the wind seems to be getting weaker and weaker, as if they are getting closer to the center of the field. Unfortunately, their progress is also grinding to a snail's pace because the snow is now knee-deep, making it difficult for them to walk. Chin Tian wants to create a sled, but he cannot see anything in the horizon that may be used as materials. Thus, they can only walk slowly. Two days later, Nick notices something on the horizon. She points it to Chin Tian and asks him if he can also see a tree, or if is it just another illusion. It would be a bad sign if they were starting to see hallucinations. Thankfully, Chin Tian also manages to spot a weird silhouette in the distance and he urges Nick to hurry so that they can examine it. As they come nearer the object, they finally see that it is indeed a tree. Nick is disappointed that the tree is dead with just its trunk remaining. But Chin Tian happily hugs her and announces that they finally made it. Chin Tian caresses the rough wood of the tree and informs Nick that its presence means they have finally entered the forest at the center of the snowfield in Area E7. A few more days of walking and they would finally see living trees, not the dead ones that litter their surroundings. With this good news elevating their mood, Chin Tian decides that they should get some rest first. Chin Tian volunteers to gather some wood so they can finally make some fire, and he advises Nick to rest. However, Nick refuses and instead volunteers to build their snow cave. Chin Tian walks past more dead trees, and he snaps some of their branches to use as kindling. He notices that the trees have been dead for a long time so the water inside the wood must have been completely lost. This would make the wood crisp which makes the best fuel for fires. When he returns to Nick, she has also finished carving out a pretty large ice cave in the snow. They then proceed to cut the wood into smaller chips. Lastly, Chin Tian uses his spent lighter and opens it with his knife. He plans to use the cotton wick inside it as an ignition since it was soaked in kerosene. With a flick from the lighter's igniter, the cotton catches on fire and a small but respectable flame slowly but surely spreads over the prepared wood. The two happily scoot closer to the warm fire. When the wind progressively gets stronger and stronger, the two worry that it might blow out the fire so they hurriedly move the burning wood inside their cave, away from the inclement weather. The surroundings get darker as night looms closer, but they don't seal the entrance of the ice cave. Doing so would trap the smoke inside the cave and suffocate the two. For dinner, they finally don't have to eat raw meat as Chin Tian happily roasts the bear meat over the fire. Chin Tian urges Nick to eat more since they just went through some tough times, but Nick assures Chin Tian that she isn't bothered as long as she's with him. The two happily eat the sizzling meat. Even though they didn't have any seasonings, it was a top-notch meal for their starving stomachs. Later that night before they go to sleep, Chin Tian binds together the remaining wood he gathered. He then informs Nick that they'll set out early the next morning before settling in for the night. The next day, they finally reach the forests where a few green trees tower over them. It was still farther than Chin Tian thought, but they ultimately reached it. 
Nick gazes at the pretty trees in the snow and happily wonders if this is where she will live with Qin Tian in the future. They walk further into the forest, hoping to find a good place to spend the night before it gets dark. An hour later, Nick speaks out to Qin Tian that they seem to be now lost. For her, it felt like they were now going around in circles. Qin Tian wonders that too so he decides that they should just spend the night where they are right now. Nick protests since there is no leeward slope to protect them from the wind, and it's not on open ground. The snow is also so fluffy that it would be impossible for them to create a snow cave. However, Qin Tian just smiles at her and tells her to leave it to him. To start his plan, Qin Tian uses his sharp katana to cut off one of the large trees with a thick trunk. After the big tree topples over, the two then collect branches with leaves still attached to them from other leafy trees. They then bunch up all of these branches so that Qin Tian can use them to build a house. The two continue collecting their materials, until a sizable bunch of them is ready for use. Afterward, they secure the needed materials. Nick ties up the big trunk of the tree to prevent it from rolling away, and then the two lay the collected branches spreadward over one side of the trunk, creating a wall of leaves. Lastly, Qin Tian fills the gaps between the leaves with snow so that the wind cannot blow in from behind and carry away their body heat. The improvised lean-to actually reminds Qin Tian of the very first camp he built back on their island. The only difference is now he's in Ara 7, and the one stranded with him is not Yellen but Nick. The thought of Yellen makes Nick wonder how the others might be doing right now. When Qin Tian and Nick are warming themselves up in front of the fire, Nick notices that her nose feels itchy. Upon touching it, she learns that it's full of blood. Nick is about to tell Qin Tian about it but she notices that his nose is bleeding too. However, Qin Tian assuages her worries and tells her that it's normal. After their bodies become warmer, their body's blood rate accelerates back to normal. The capillaries in their noses, which are originally contracted and fragile due to cold, wouldn't be able to handle this new blood rate so it would rupture and cause a nosebleed. Their noses bleed because they couldn't adapt in time. To fix it, Qin Tian splashes some snow onto his face to cool down his nose, thus slowing down its blood rate. Nick was about to follow his lead but she noticed that her arms hurt when she tried to move them. Before she can hurt herself even further, Qin Tian helps her and cools her nose down for her. He instructs Nick to not move and instead get some rest. They have been tense the past few days so they need to relax. As Nick goes to sleep, Qin Tian holds her tight to keep him warm. He then decides to take watch for the whole night. They haven't really encountered any other beasts except for the polar bear they fought and killed, but Qin Tian is worried that the forest isn't totally safe. There might be fatal risks hiding in the dark, so someone has to keep an eye out. The chance of encountering something dangerous might be small, but once it happens, it can be life-threatening, so he cannot let his guard down. He stares at the crackling fire and readies himself for a long night. A few hours later, Qin Tian shakes himself awake. He scolds himself for just staring blankly at the fire and falling asleep. He has to keep his mind busy so he won't fall asleep. Thus, he decides to think about their future instead. Before the ring's energy ran out, Qin Tian managed to have a video call with Yellen. However, they don't know how big their new world is. Even if Yellen and the others know that they are alive, it would be too foolish to hope that they might be able to get there. Qin Tian remembers how the two of them were swept away by an ocean current that went back and forth between the two areas. If there were no other factors with the current they encountered, then Yellen and the others could follow it and find them. However, if there were any other factors, or if the two of them drifted to their place not because of the current, then the others would have no way of finding them, and they are all on their own. They cannot rely on anyone else. Either way, Qin Tian realizes that it would be impossible for him and Nick to escape their surroundings in the near future. Therefore, he needs to make a plan for living in the cold for a long time. Currently, they can get water by melting snow, and they also have enough food for a while thanks to the bear's meat. Their greatest problem is how to keep themselves warm in a low-temperature environment. The woodshed they currently have does help them keep warm, but it's too small for them, making it impossible to stretch their bodies or have a good rest. Not only that, it also isn't very solid, and any large beast can easily destroy it. Most importantly, Qin Tian recognizes that, despite the cold, it is still summer in their current area. When autumn comes, it will be colder and that's why he has to build a house that would protect them from colder winter winds and wild beasts before that time comes. For food and clothes, Qin Tian acknowledges that he needs to find a way to hunt animals. Otherwise, they may have a fire and a house, but they would still freeze and starve to death. As the hours pass, their fire dies out and Qin Tian can see the surroundings getting brighter. The sun is rising, signaling the start of a new day. Nick wakes up and asks Qin Tian if it's morning already, but he tells her it's still dawn and she should get some more sleep. Nick doesn't want to since Qin Tian had stayed awake the whole night for her sake. Not only that, 
He even hugged and held her. Nick tries to stand up but her whole body still aches when she moves. Chin Tian hurriedly stops her and helps her. He suspects that her motion is restricted because of the strain. That would also explain why she would become stiff when she tries to move. To fix it, Chin Tian warns her that he will take off her clothes. The surprised Nick blushes confusingly at his statement. Chin Tian had to convince Nick that he didn't mean anything by what he said, and that he only wanted to massage her so that she would recover faster. He had learned about how strain can make someone's body stiff and aching from the wild first aid collections. It was recommended that one treat this condition with drugs, but since it's hard to find any right now, Chin Tian can only give Nick a massage to relieve her pain and accelerate her recovery. In the case of shoulder strain, the massage therapy recommended is through acupressure, basically pressing down on the body's meridians and then swiveling her shoulders. After he gives her a massage, he instructs Nick to go lie down and rest. Nick tries to apologize for being a burden on him but he assures her that she is not a burden. If not for her, he would have probably frozen to death on the snow when he became blind a few days ago. She also saved him during that fight with the polar bear. He lets Nick know how important she is to him, so what she needs to do is to rest and recover soon. Nick flushed in embarrassment and covered herself up with her bearskin blanket. Meanwhile, Chin Tian eats some roasted meat for breakfast to start his day. For today, he was planning to start building a house that can keep them warm and defend against beasts. But there's another thing that he first needs to do. He cuts up a round piece of wood and uses both red-hot coals and his knife to carve it into two makeshift wooden drinking glasses. He then puts some snow in it and places it near the fire to melt it and make water. They haven't actually had any waiter to drink in days. The melted snow quenches their thirst, but Nick wishes that the water be hotter so it can actually warm up their body. Nick tells her that it can be done, but it would take a lot of effort. He could put a stone in the fire and throw it into the water to heat it up. But all he could find around them were more trees and snow. There was no stone in sight. He can also put the wooden cup in the snow directly since the water inside wouldn't burn it. But over time, this would turn the cup into charcoal, causing it to crack and be poisonous. After putting Nick back in bed, Chin Tian leaves their camp to start the day. He worries that he might walk too far from their camp and Nick may run into danger. Looking around, Chin Tian feels like he is missing something, but he couldn't figure out what it might be. Thus, he decided to open up the system shop and learn more using the experience packs. The snowfield experience pack he bought before applied only to the snowfields, so he had to use another gift called the Snow Forest Experience Pack. The gift immediately turns into knowledge in Chin Tian's brain, and he finally learns what he's been missing. From the moment they entered the forest, he still hadn't seen a single animal footprint. This must be because they're still on the edge of the forest, which is still scant with edible plants. The lack of edible plants would explain why animals wouldn't be there since they also need food to survive. From this, Chin Tian infers that maybe, he should put off building a house first. Instead, he should walk deep into the forest and find the best location to live for a long time. While walking, he notices that the forest is made up of white birch trees, pines, and fir trees. He approaches a white birch tree and cuts off the bark with his knife. After exposing its inner trunk, he stabs it, and sap steadily pours out. Thanks to the experience packs, he learned that white birch trees collect and store nutrients at their roots before autumn ends. When spring comes, it will then grow rapidly with these nutrients. During this period, the white birch contains extremely nutritious sap, rich in vitamins and minerals. The sap can also be used to detox the human liver and enhance one's immune system. Using another stick, Chin Tian managed to guide the flowing sap into his wooden cap. He was disappointed to learn that he collected hardly any sap and that the effort wasn't worth it. He then peels off the rest of the white birch's bark and chops down the tree with his sword. After the tree falls down, Chin Tian cuts it up into smaller pieces. Now, he has a lot of wood for his projects, and thanks to the gift Tough Ox, he can manage to carry them back to their camp. The sun was beginning to set when Chin Tian arrived back at the camp. Tired of chopping wood, he carves two more wooden cups so that he can continuously drink more cups of water without waiting for the snow to melt. His snowshoes, which were made from broken branches and intestines, were also remade with better wood. Nick slept the whole day due to his illness, and Chin Tian actually found it depressing with no one to talk to. However, he acknowledges that it's part of having to survive in the wild, and they don't have the luxury of being choosy. He smiles and decides that after one more day of rest, they'll continue back on their journey. He then spent the next day converting their humble wooden shed into a sled. He puts the sleeping Nick inside of it, and now, they can travel while resting. Fortunately, the sled he made was not too small, so they could both lie down and stretch their bodies. It was also easy to pull with just one man since he added sled blades to the bottom to reduce the ground contact area. This would greatly reduce the friction between the sled and snow. 
He was planning to use the gift Tough Ox to pull the sled quickly, but he learned that just like all his other skills such as Swift Cheetah, the gift doesn't actually give him superpowers but just stimulates his body's potential. He is still human, but he will still feel tired when pulling the sled. Later that night, Qin Tian observes that they are moving too slowly since there's only one person pulling the sled. They are still on the edge of the forest, even though he was walking the whole day. Thankfully, the sled carries their shed so he doesn't have to build it every time they take a break for the night. Nick then wakes up from her rest and joins Qin Tian for dinner in front of the campfire. She asks where they are now, and Qin Tian happily explains that they are still on the forest's edge. She tries to volunteer to take turns pulling the shed, but Qin Tian hurriedly shuts down her ideas. A few minutes later, Qin Tian's stomach starts to rumble, and he hurriedly goes to the forest to relieve himself. After a while, he returns feeling much better. Nick hands him some roasted meat to eat, but his stomach abruptly starts groaning again. He hurriedly goes back to the forest while telling Nick to eat first without him. One hour later, Qin Tian sits back beside Nick with a relieved expression on his face. Nick hands him some water to drink while Qin Tian ponders why his stomach seems to have turned on him. He must have eaten something bad so he wonders if it's the chicken or polar bear meat that disagrees with his stomach. However, he realizes that his stomach should have ached days ago if the meats were the problem, but it only started now. Aside from the meat, water is the only other thing he had consumed, so what could have caused it? He then remembers something from the experience packs. If water is nowhere to be found, people can melt snow into water and drink it. But this would be dangerous for long periods of time. Water lacks minerals the body needs, so even if people boil it to kill bacteria, it can still cause abdominal distension or diarrhea. Chin Tin spits out the water, making Nick ask him what the problem is. Nick tells her what he just remembered and concludes that they should drink as little snow water as possible. If needed, they can use the pine leaves to create some tea before drinking it. Nick reminds him that they don't have stones to boil the water and make tea, but thankfully, Chin Tian has another idea. He puts his sword in the flames of their campfire and waits for it to get hot. He then dips it into their cups of water, making it boil. Nick was amazed at this idea, but Qin Tian admits that he thought of doing it a long time ago. However, he didn't want to do it because putting his sword in the fire would increase its carbon content, decreasing its toughness, and making it brittle and prone to break. It would also take too much time to boil water this way, he's only doing it now because they have no choice or else, they will get diarrhea, which might lead to dehydration. After putting some pine needles in the cup of hot water, the two enjoy their new cup of makeshift tea. Qin Tian then proceeds to rest first, since he has a lot more work to do in the morning. The next day, Qin Tian starts his day by carving a wooden shovel. Using it, he digs all around the snow, hoping to look for stones. Their drinking water is his top priority, so he needs to find some quickly. After a while, he finds a handful of small stones that would be useful in boiling the water. Afterward, Qin Tian resumed pulling the sled deeper and deeper into the forest. After a few hours, something catches his eye and he hurriedly drops the sled to check it out. In a nearby tree, green moss is growing on its outer bark. It was a sign of life. As Qin Tian pulls the sled throughout their journey, he notices that the mosses on the trees are getting bigger and bigger. Moss itself has a simple structure, so it is greatly affected by its environment, including the soil, light intensities, and even air. That's why mosses can also be used as a pointer to the direction and location of water. In the wilderness, large rocks or trees usually have moss growth on their north side. Thus, one can tell the direction based on this difference. However, locating water is a harder task. Just looking at one tree is not enough to know the direction of a water source. It would be best to compare different mosses from trees at least a kilometer apart and judge their growth. Thankfully, Qin Tian doesn't really care that much about water since they aren't lacking it right now. With each step Qin Tian takes, he can feel the change in his surroundings as he gets into the middle of the forest. The snow is thinner here, and most importantly, it's also warmer. It's still completely barren compared to tropical forests, but it is still a lot better than the snowfield they were trapped in before. According to the experience packs, there might be berries around, which would also lead to the presence of animals. After two hours of walking, Qin Tian sits in the snow disappointed that he can't find a single source of food. His mood was about to worsen when he spotted a bush a few meters ahead of him. He shows the bush to Nick and informs her that they have finally reached the forest. In the next few days, they'll be settling down in a more secure and permanent place. He then asks Nick if he can leave her for a while so he can find a source of water. Nick happily reports that thanks to Qin Tian's massage, the pain in his arms has been completely gone and his body is no longer stiff. She can now defend herself to an extent so Qin Tian shouldn't worry about her too much. Qin Tian uses Swift Cheetah to run around the forest looking for the water source. 
Without the sled slowing him down, it would be faster for him to do it this way. He studies the moss from different trees in the surroundings, and from them, he learns that the water source is farther from their location. He goes back to Nick and pulls the sled deeper into the forest. This proves fruitful since Chintian observes that the moss is getting larger and larger in the trees. Not only that, he finally found animal footprints in the snow. It was the footprint of a snow hare but it was a few days old so he couldn't track and capture the hare. Nevertheless, the footprint is a good sign that they were in the right location. After a while, Nick herself spots the creek flowing a few meters away from them. The creek is small and shallow, but the water flow is abundant. It is also full of stones so they would be able to use those too. Chin Tian points out that they should build their shelter a half hour away from the creek, since the creek is also essential to all animals. It would be dangerous for them if their shelter was attacked by animals, and there were only two of them to defend it. After searching, they found an excellent open space near the creek and decided that that would be their base of operation. The first thing they need to do to build a house is to lay a good foundation. However, they have no tools to use to dig, and they can't make steel tools, so Chin Tian would have to make stone ones. As for food, he hadn't hunted in days and the bear's meat is enough for only a week, so he would have to stock up soon. Chin Tian heads back to the creek and collects some stones he can use to make tools. One of the stones he found is a flint which is dense, hard, and is historically used in primitive societies. Back at their camp, he found Nick cooking dinner so Chin Tian started polishing the stones into axes and hoes. The next day, Chin Tian leaves once more to gather more materials, while Nick, feeling guilty from resting all day, wants to help. She decides to polish the stones Chin Tian collected since polishing doesn't require her soldiers to move too much. Meanwhile, Chin Tian spent the day tracking down animals. He found another fresh trail left by snow hares, which meant that this place was a regular trail for them. It would be too time-consuming to follow the footprints all the way to their nest, and the nest might even be empty. So he just decides to create a trap. First, he made a tripwire using a piece of stick, and then laid down a net under it. If the tripwire is activated, a tree branch above would pull the net shut, capturing any animals that might be on top of it. He then hid the trap under a fine layer of snow. It only took him 10 minutes to set the trap up so he decided to continue searching for other materials. Chin Tian's search was rewarded with some oyster mushrooms growing in the bark of a tree. Luckily the mushrooms were not only edible, but are also rich in protein, essential amino acids, and carbohydrates. Looking at all the mushrooms around him, Chin Tian was reminded that it had been a long time since they had eaten something other than roasted meat. He uses the remainder of the net and some bear skin to create a makeshift bag and gather more mushrooms. He wishes that he could use the other furs as bags but they need them to keep out the cold from their shed. He decides that he should just get more furs later so that he can create some bags. Meanwhile, his mouth is already watering at the thought of mushroom soup for dinner. After walking around some more, Chin Tian also spots some acorns on the bottom of a tree. He could tell squirrels have been through the tree so he rigs another trap using some tree branch and the pine cone as bait. If a squirrel tries to get the pine cone, the trap would activate and the branch would pin the squirrel into the trunk. Qin Tian can see that the day is still early, so he puts down his bag of mushrooms and decides to create another trap he learned from the experience pack. He pulls out his spade and digs a pretty large hole in the ground. Using some pointy pieces of wood that he sharpened with a knife, he made a pitfall trap, which he hid with some snow and a small piece of meat as bait. After his fruitful trap-making day, Qin Tian heads back to the camp with his mushrooms. He was surprised to see the rows of tools Nick made. Nick didn't sleep without Chin Tian there to keep watch, so after Chin Tian commended her for the stone tools, she went back to sleep. Meanwhile, he starts cooking dinner using the stones he collected to boil water and make soup. An hour later, the enticing aroma awakens Nick and they enjoy the soup made of some mushrooms and meat. Chin Tian laments that they don't have any salt to season the soup with, but it was still their best meal to date. Their stock of mushrooms is good enough for one more day, and their meat is also running out so Chin Tian hopes that he catches some animals soon. He set up many traps, but it depends on luck whether prey would fall into them. Nick realizes that it would be foolish to rely on only hunting as their source of food. If he wants to start a farm, he would need to build a greenhouse and that would also take too long. Thus, he decides that they might need to rely on aquatic animals as a reliable source of food. So they would need to search for larger bodies of water soon. Nick falls asleep in front of the fire so Chin Tian carries her back to their shed. Their bleak situation is annoying Chin Tian since autumn is fast approaching in two months. Before then, he would need to build a cabin and get enough food to last through winter, or they would die. The next day, when Chin Tian checked his traps he managed to catch snow hares, some squirrels, and a snowy owl. His trap's success rate was 50%, so if he created more traps, 
then he would capture more animals. Thanks to the experience packs, he could place the traps at the right location, which really improved his chances. Unfortunately, the pitfall trap didn't catch any large predators. There's not even a footprint around it. Chintian wonders if he should improve the bait with live animals, but he realizes that the animals are just enough for him and Nick. So he can't do that. He then creates a few more traps and heads back to their camp where Nick is grinding their stone tools. He informs her that he had managed to create hundreds of traps around their camp and divided them into four zones. That way, he would only go to one zone per day because the animals might get scared if he only targeted a specific place. However, the animals would disappear when winter comes, so they shouldn't rely on them too much. He then hands the animals he caught to Nick. For the next few days, Nick would be the one to collect the trapped animals and reset their baits, while Chin Tian would focus on creating their cabin. He uses the stone axe to chop off some wood to use as walls, and he digs into the ground using the stone hoe so that he can erect the cabin's foundation. A few days later, their clearing gets larger as more trees fall while their cabin also takes shape. Since they don't have any nails, Chin Tian carves the edges of the wood into joints that perfectly fit together. This was something the ancient Chinese did. One and a half months later, the cabin is finally finished, with evergreen leaves as a roof and fur to act as their door. Chin Tian was disappointed that the system only grants points upon accomplishing a task the first time, so he didn't really get any points now. He had already created cabins back on the island. Inside the cabin was a comfortable bed big enough for the two of them, and a fire. Nick asks him why he made two windows in the cabin when it's so cold outside, but Chin Tian reminds her that smoke still needs to escape the cabin. If there were no windows, they would be poisoned by carbon monoxide. They also couldn't make a larger cabin since the heat will dissipate quicker and it would be harder to keep it warm. When the campfire inside the cabin burns, the rising smoke continuously smolders the roof, filling the room with warm air which would also help reduce the moisture in the wood and prevent it from rotting. The smoke also contains tar, which would penetrate and seal the small holes in the house, improving its insect resistance and waterproofness. Nick asks him what they should do with the piles of frozen hares and squirrels they stocked up for winter. It would be creepy for them to stay inside the cabin, and Chin Tian doesn't want to wake up seeing hundreds of dead eyes staring at him, so he decides to build a small chest outside in the next few days. As Nick heads outside to prepare the wood, Chin Tian appraises their progress. They have collected over 100 animals, ranging from hares, squirrels, owls, lemmings, and even snow foxes. They also have a wide and thick fur blanket. He wants to make some pottery jars next because boiling water with stone is too time-consuming. However, this would delay his search for possible fisheries. He then heads outside the cabin to start on the small chest made of wood for their storage of animals. The cold would also prevent the animals from going bad. Later that night, Chin Tian ponders the approaching autumn while creating nets made from some ropes he made. When Nick wakes up, they exchange tasks and Chin Tian sleeps, exhausted from all the preparation they have been doing for the upcoming winter. When Chin Tian woke up, something confused him. He didn't sleep for too long, so why is there already sunlight outside? When he opened the window, it indeed was daybreak, confusing him some more. He wonders if this is a polar day phenomenon, but such a thing happens only in the polar regions. Nick asks him what he's talking about, so he has to explain that the polar day is also known as the perpetual day or midnight sun. Since the Earth is tilted on its axis, one polar region of the planet would receive more than 24 hours of day or night. Nick is amazed to learn this, but Chin Tian admits that it can also be annoying. He doesn't have any tools to accurately measure the time, so he has been adjusting his schedule based on the amount of daylight. If they truly are having a polar day, then his regular life would be disrupted. He doesn't want to rely on just his own biological clock to tell the time, so he wonders what he could do. He can create a sundial that would tell the time based on the position of the sun in the sky. However, right now, the sun shines more than 12 hours during the day, so it would be useless. He also cannot use the stars, since most of the time it would be too bright to see them. If this continues, their schedule might fail to keep up with their biological clocks. Unfortunately, he couldn't really think of a solution, so he would have to rely on his biological clock for now. It may not be very accurate, but at least it can provide him with a rough judgment. He then goes back to sleep after asking Nick to wake him up when she feels hungry. Three days later, the two set out on another expedition to look for a good place to fish after preparing multiple boxes. It was still summer so the wind was still warmer than before. They follow the creek upstream in the hopes that it will lead to a much larger body of water. After walking for a whole day, they stop to rest for the night. The sun is still shining above them, but Chin Tian's biological clock is telling him it's already 6 p.m. While Nick is setting up their camp, Chin Tian leaves to set up a simple hangman's trap nearby. 
The trap would strangle any animal that will put its head through it since the more it struggles, the tighter the noose would become. They brought a lot of food with them so Qin Tian doesn't really need to hunt, but it would be great if he did catch something. The next day, a large animal spots Qin Tian's simple trap, but instead of getting caught, it just destroys the branch the rope is connected to. Qin Tian spotted the animal and wondered if it was a honey badger. A honey badger is supposed to be white, but this animal is colored brown, so he deduces that it might be a wolverinian steed. Wolverines live in boreal forests and tundra grassland while honey badgers live in the rainforests, so he believes that his conclusion must be right. The wolverine is a territorial creature, and upon seeing Qin Tian it releases a loud roar and rushes to attack with its teeth and claws. In the wilds, the wolverine curls its body to minimize the damage caused by the teeth of other animals, but against Qin Tian's sharp knife, this strategy doesn't really work. After killing the animals he goes back to Nick and continues their journey. A few hours later, Nick spots a large river ahead of them, and the two drop their sled to quickly check it out. To their amazement, it wasn't only a large river, but a river heading directly into a group of mountains. After the time they spent on the empty snowfield and in the monotonous forests, the snow mountain made them want to go climb it for a simple look. Qin Tian also hopes that just like the mountains back on the island, there might be iron ores in the mountains which they can use to create metal tools. With a new destination on the horizon, the two excitedly decide to check it out. Looking at the towering mountain before them, Qin Tian notices something strange. Recalling the map he saw of Zone E7, the mountain area is in the center of the map. A large forest then surrounds the mountain area with the snowfield surrounding the forest. On the map, the forest was much larger than the snowfield, and yet it took them almost a week to cross the snowfield, but just a few days to travel through the forest and reach the mountain area. He does admit that they were traveling slowly through the snowfield, because they didn't have the sled but it still doesn't make sense. Nick notices his troubled face but Qin Tian doesn't want to worry her, so instead, they continue following the river. A little while later, they spot what they are looking for, a fish. Qin Tian recognizes the fish as an arctic char, a fish that usually lives in the polar regions of Europe and America. Arctic chars usually travel in rivers through the year, spending summer in the sea but retreating back to rivers in the autumn. This makes Qin Tian realize that more fish should be upstream of the river, and they hurriedly pull their sled. After a day of pulling, they finally reach their destination and a beautiful pond opens up before them. Strangely, they hear some trees being felled and they quickly check if someone is there. However, Nick sees a strange large mouse gnawing on the fallen tree. Qin Tian explains to her that it's not a mouse but a beaver. The beaver starts running away upon seeing them, leaving Nick to wonder what beaver meat tastes like. Meanwhile, Qin Tian studies the fallen tree and the way it was cut up. The tree wasn't hollowed by insects nor was it forcibly broken by external forces like strong wind. That must mean that the beaver from earlier had gnawed through solid wood to bring the tree down. Beavers usually have four huge and hard front teeth, and they can easily gnaw through a tree as thick as a human's head within just two hours. Nick is getting more and more astounded by beavers the more she hears about them. This was further intensified when Qin Tian guessed that the pond before them could have evolved from woodland after beavers built dams. They truly are the master architects of nature. Qin Tian was knowledgeable about them thanks to the system, but he was still shocked to see the beavers' capabilities with his own eyes. The pond before them looks huge, but the largest dam built by beavers back on Earth was more than 850 meters, so it still makes sense. Beavers are also herbivores, mainly eating tree branches and bark. That would mean they don't have to share the fish in the pond with the beavers. The fish in the lake are so plentiful that it should be enough for two humans to survive through the winter. He tells Nick the good news, and that they don't even have to set traps for wild animals. Instead, they can just relax and focus on catching the fish. A few minutes later they started fishing by using spears made by Qin Tian. After they catch a sizable amount, they roast them in a fire and happily eat their new meal. There are only a few types of fish on the pond, but thankfully, they don't have too strong a taste, unlike the animals they have been eating the past few days. After eating, they organize everything they need to catch more fish. Nick pulls out the fish traps they made while Qin Tian prepares some hare meat to be used as bait. After putting the meat inside the traps, they drop it into the water. Now, they have a steady supply of food. In winter, all creatures become quiet as animals either hibernate or migrate to escape the severe cold. However, fishes are different since they live in the water. Thus, it's a natural steady source of food. Qin Tian's next challenge is to prepare warm clothes for winter. However, he first wants to see the snowy mountains some more. The two of them put their items back on the sled and set off once more higher into the mountain slopes. 
As they climb the mountains, Nick stops as she notices some weird animal hair hanging from the trees. Chin Tian recognizes the hair as reindeer hair that must have fallen during the seasonal changes. That means they might be able to get warmer furs for the winter. According to the Snow Forest Experience Collections, reindeer migrate eight months of the year to find food and escape the cold. There might be a chance that they wouldn't be able to find the reindeer herd, but Chin Tian couldn't let go of this chance. After two days of tracking, the two finally found the herd consisting of at least 200 reindeer. Chin Tian could easily capture one of them using his gift, Swift Cheetah, but that would frighten the other reindeer and drive them away. Instead, he tells Nick that they should retreat in the mean team and prepare themselves. Then, they can dig a trap near the herd so that the reindeer would run into it one by one. After three days of preparation, they are ready to enact their plan. Chin Tian quickly jumps out of the bushes yelling at the top of his lungs and waving his stone axe. Upon seeing him, the reindeer obviously get frightened and run for their lives. Chin Tian manages to catch up to one of them, and with one swing of his axe, the reindeer falls to the ground, dead. Meanwhile, another reindeer distracts Chin Tian due to its strange behavior. Despite him being so close, the reindeer wasn't running away. The reindeer then suddenly grunts in exertion before running away, leaving behind a newly born reindeer fawn. On the other side of the clearing, the pitfall trap they created was activated, and seven reindeer got caught in it. However, this wasn't enough for Nick and she quickly charged at the herd of reindeer. Using her dual knives, she manages to take down a couple more of them, but the majority manages to escape. She hurriedly goes to report to Chin Tian, but she finds him nursing a baby reindeer fawn. Chin Tian informs her that the fawn was choking on the amniotic fluid, and he hands the fawn to her for a while. Meanwhile, Chin Tian approaches one of the trees around them and peels off its bark. After fashioning the bark into a pipe and lighting it on fire, Chin Tian blows the smoke into the fawn's face. The smoke causes the fawn to cough, and it manages to cough out the amniotic fluid it was choking on. This was a technique Chin Tian saw one of the elders use back in the village to save a calf. Nick asks him if they should keep it and Chin Tian agrees. Reindeers are mammals, meaning they would need milk to feed it. However, Chin Tian has no idea where to get some. Since reindeer live in such an extreme environment, they grow up extremely fast. It will only take a day for the baby reindeer to learn how to stand, run, and search for food. This fast growth might mean it won't need milk to grow, but Chin Tian's instinct says that newborns are very weak and must drink milk. Not knowing what to do, they decide to just light a bonfire to provide warmth for the baby reindeer while they deal with the other reindeer corpses. Nick pets the reindeer fawn sleeping on her lap, while Chin Tian collects the 16 reindeer they managed to kill. They are more than enough to provide all the fur they need for winter, however, transporting them back to their camp might be a problem since each adult reindeer weighs about 440 pounds. In the meantime, he decides to just clean them all up and deal with the issue later. He goes back to Nick who is gushing over the cuteness of the baby reindeer. Chin Tian switches with Nick and warms up the baby reindeer near the bonfire. He wonders what he should name it but he realizes that it might even be too early to give it a name. After all, he's not sure it would even survive. He tries to check if the reindeer is still even alive, and thankfully, he can feel its weak breath with his fingers. He starts petting the baby reindeer, while telling it that it needs to grow up since he needs someone to pull their sled, just like Santa Claus's sled. The next day, the baby reindeer is alive and well as it shakingly tries to learn how to walk. Chin Tian wonders if it might run away, but surprisingly, the reindeer instead scoots over closer to him. The reindeer sniffs all over him, making Chin Tian suspect that it might be looking for breast milk. Chin Tian sadly informs the inquisitive reindeer that he doesn't have any breast milk. However, he opens his hand and offers him some moss he collected earlier. If the baby reindeer doesn't eat it, then he has no idea what to do then. Thankfully, the reindeer starts eating the moss after giving it some cursory sniff. Nick exits the shed after resting and she is happy to learn that the baby reindeer can now stand up and even walk. She giggles as the reindeer licks her face, showing its affection for her. Chin Tian guesses that the reindeer might have remembered her smell. Nick did help in saving the reindeer's life by cleaning up the amniotic fluid. The two then switch tasks as Chin Tian enters their shed to rest, while Nick continues taking care of and feeding the reindeer. As Chin Tian lies down on their bed of furs, he starts thinking of what they should do next. They now have the necessary supplies to create warm clothes for winter. Should they head to the snow mountains some more, or should they return back to the cabin? In the end, Chin Tian decides that they should head back to the cabin. They were just planning to establish some fisheries but they ended up taking a massive detour just to get reindeer fur. In addition, the materials they have gathered are increasing and it's becoming more difficult for them to move it. As for the reindeer meat, Chin Tian wonders if he should even try to bring it back to their camp. At first, he was thinking of transporting them several times but there's no need for that now. 
They already found a fishery so there's no problem with their food supply, it would just end up tiring them out. Maybe he should just bring back the reindeer's furs and tendons. That way, they can just get some fish from the fisheries for their winter supply, and their load would be much lighter. However, the baby reindeer is also a problem. He would need to keep it away from the corpses of the others, since it might suffer from trauma if it sees them. After all, it can still recognize its own kind. The next day, Chin Tian leads the baby reindeer away from their camp while Nick gets rid of all the reindeer meat. A few days later, they are back at the pond and the reindeer can now easily run and jump around. They pulled the traps they left behind in the water, and it was loaded with fish. The large harvest gladdens Chin Tian, and they quickly clean the fish and prepare it for transport. While working, Nick asks Chin Tian if he thought of a name yet for their new companion. Chin Tian agrees that they should probably name the reindeer since it's already growing so fast. Barring any accidents, it would surely grow into an adult reindeer. Chin Tian stares fondly at the cute reindeer and decides to name it Horn after the cute horns on its forehead. One week later, they were back at their main base and Chin Tian had spent the past few days creating a small wooden shed for Horn. It was even placed right by their cabin's window so they could keep an eye on it. Reindeers typically have thick fur so they can survive winter. But since Horn is still a child, they usually cuddle with their parents to stay warm. However, Horn isn't with his kind, so they decide to keep him with them inside their cabin for now. A few nights later, Chin Tian is trying to sleep next to Nick, but the freezing cold seems to have intensified, making him shiver terribly. He tries to open the window to check what's up, but a cold surge of freezing air suddenly blows inside. Chin Tian hurriedly shuts the window close. He then tells Nick that it's snowing heavily and the polar day is finally over. It's finally dark again, and it looks like the change in season is finally starting. They would have to deal with the snow as soon as possible, and their trip to the snow mountain is cancelled. Winter is definitely not a time for travel since they can run into a snowstorm outside and bury themselves if they aren't careful. They then go back to sleep since they would probably have a very busy day ahead. The next morning they found their whole camp covered with snow. They wouldn't have been able to push open the door but thankfully, Chin Tian thought ahead and designed it to open inward. Horn quickly jumps around and plays in the soft snow while the two humans go to work, dealing with the reindeer fur. Their food stock is so large that Chin Tian also suggests making a warehouse to store them in. They then spend the next week stockpiling and preparing for winter, while Chin Tian also starts on building a kiln. They now have everything they need for winter so next, he wants to improve their quality of life. With a kiln they can make pots and pans, and he might even be able to make a bathtub. A few days later he finishes the pots and pans but he has no idea on how to start on a bathtub. Thus he changes his idea instead. First, they would need to build another hut. A few days later, Nick is now enjoying a soak in steamy hot water inside their new hut. It turns out that Nick's plan was to build a hut, remove all the snow inside, dig a hole, and plaster it with mud. He then burned some firewood inside the mud plastered hole, which solidified the mud into an improvised bathtub. After her bath, she sees Chin Tian heading out again to check on their traps. He told her that even though they have lots of fish, it would be tiring to eat it all the time so they should try other foods too. Nick decides to accompany him along with Horn who runs away looking for his own food. They are also about to split up and check the traps when Horn comes back bleeding loudly. The reindeer seem to be telling them something so they decided to follow him. Horn then leads them to a bush full of colorful berries that Chin Tian identified as cloud berries. The place was full of them and the two gathered them in their bags. The berries usually grow on the ground and are sheltered by weeds, so it is very well hidden from the eyes. If it weren't for Horn they would have never found them on their own. Later that night, they try the berries and their eyes twinkle from their sweet and sour taste. They finally don't have to eat just meat anymore. When October arrives, snow is now heavily falling from the sky. Nick and Chin Tian are wearing more and more fur on their bodies, but they know that it's still not the middle of winter. For today, they have decided to go out and look for seal oil. They head out of the forest and back into the snowfield in the hopes of hunting some seal in the ice sheets. They also brought Horn with them to pull their sled through the snow. For shelter, Nick volunteers to create an igloo in the snow. Nick was doubtful that the soft snow could even hold up an igloo, but she was proven wrong when the snow blocks proved hard enough when she tried to make one. Chin Tian explains that it's because although the freshly fallen snow is soft, the way it gets accumulated through time makes it denser under the effect of gravity. Except for the fluffy snow on the surface, the deeper snow has accumulated for years and has been compacted by gravity. Cutting snow blocks and stacking them up actually reminds Chin Tian of his childhood. They also cannot work continuously since they have to be careful not to sweat. Sweating would get their clothes wet, and when this freezes, the clothes wouldn't keep them warm anymore. Therefore, they have to stop working when they feel hot enough to sweat. 
After two hours, their igloo is finally finished. They also made a separate snow cave for Horn to sleep in. Inside the igloo, Nick wonders if other people are living there like them. Chintian replies that although he's not sure, someone probably lived there before. He recalls how Huang Yi Qiu informed him that there was a laboratory in each zone in Biosphere 3. That means there must have been a laboratory here in the past, even though the researchers might already be dead. If they can find the laboratory, they might be able to get help and contact the others. Thus, Chin Tian decides to start searching for it after winter. After eating some meat, they go to sleep inside the igloo. The next day, they finally reach the ice sheets and on the horizon resting under the bright sun are a group of seals. It looks like their journey wasn't in vain. That is all for part 8. Stay tuned for the next part.